What's up guys, Patrick here, New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Very happy to have Matt back on the channel today. You guys remember that other build he did? That thing was spectacular and so was this one. So join us for the tour. Thanks for having me on again, Patrick. It's great to be here. Uh, so remember my first build, it was the one I did personally about a year ago. And then from there, someone could approach us, ask if we would build another. So we did, and this is the product. And that spirit, if anyone is looking for a van, we're taking on clients. So feel free to reach out. We'll have some contact info in the description. So this build is a Ram Promaster 2500. It's a 159 inch wheelbase. Uh, just a few modifications on the outside. We did an upgraded suspension as well as an inch and a half lift, as well as the running boards here to help you get in and out of the van with that one and a half inch lift. Uh, going up top, we can see here we have a 12 volt air conditioner, a 400 watt residential solar panel, a skylight, as well as an exhaust fan inside the shower. And there's also roof deck is a strong term, but there's a roof perch, I would say. Yes. <laughs> Uh, if you want to step inside right here, just some more stuff you can see from outside. We do have a bug screen, which is really nice for just any kind of campsite or anywhere else. You can get that indoor outdoor feeling. We also have an awning in the back that you could hook up outside here for when you're really making yourself comfortable. The first thing you'll see when you come in here is a seven millimeter vinyl uh, plank flooring throughout, insulated underneath, as well as our laminated cabinetry throughout. This is all half inch cabinet grade wood. And let's take a step inside. Before we dive into the details, let me give you a quick lay of the land. We have the standard passenger seat swivel that really opens up the space. Come here, the first thing you're gonna see aside from the gold finishes is the toilet and shower area, as well as a dual side galley with the kitchen as well as sink and everything on the right right there. Opens up to a small dining area with dual bench seats and a lagu mount table. And then also in the very back there is a twin size bed that can actually pull out to a full size queen. So getting into the details of the van, we'll start up front. This one's rough. I was finishing up this van for this video today. It's Wednesday morning. I get my laminate shippings on Wednesday afternoon. We're gonna be putting a face frame here as well as a sliding curtain rod, but it just didn't have the materials. I didn't wanna hack it together. So it's gonna have a curtain rod that will separate the cab from the living space and everything else. Another spot as a van builder I'm quietly proud of is actually back here. because This is one of those spots that are so easy not to finish, but we really wanted to finish all the way up to the front of the van and make every little last inch of this thing look as nice as possible. Uh, take a step down here. This also incorporates itself into the uh, swivel seat, just a place to rest your feet while you're hanging out. And also this opens up to a little bit of extra storage as well as the exhaust for our, uh, our heating system. This is a general components heater that taps right into the gas tank and runs off the 12 volt in the back of the system. So it's nice, you don't have to think about refilling diesel or anything like that. It just taps in the gas tank and works great. It really heats the space very quickly. Um, that's screwed down if you ever need to access anything. And the heater, you can get right in. Another thing you'll notice here is a remote for the lights. The client didn't want any buttons here, wanted things to be the walls to be very clean and sleek. So we actually have dual remotes for the system, but you know, getting in with a remote, you're gonna have to be hunting down your remote in the dark. So we got two of them. The first one is mounted here and it can peel right off if you wanted to. So when you open the van, you turn your lights on and then you could find your other remotes. Uh, these lights are all dimmable, like based on, you can go for warmness as well as brightness. And then we also have different zones in here for the, uh, the under cabinet lights, as well as the kicks. You can set different moods and it really gives the place a really bright, open feeling. Uh, from here, we can step into the shower. See our offset handles here for a pretty nice, clean look opens up, we have an acrylic mirror on the one door as well as towel hooks on the other. The Levo, uh, Levio dry flush toilet, which I think is probably the best option for people. I mean, rather than a cassette toilet or compostable. Uh, this is just a nice like spray handle. We also have here the lights as well as an exhaust fan inside the shower. So if you're just ever, you know, you wanna get moisture in there, you're drying things out, it makes it nice and easy to clean out. Um, these showers we actually build from, it's pretty much a giant wooden box. When we start, we like build it to spec there inside our shop. We'll go ahead and red guard the inside of it and then we plane the base down to the drain so the water will drain nice and easily. Lay down to, uh, some fiberglass as well as a gel coat and then from there build up the side of the walls with this PVC tile with silicone in between the tongue and grooves as well as the edges. Just a really clean look, very happy with how it came together and it's you're never gonna have a problem with water leaking in here. And um, also, just if you ever are taking a shower, we have the doors to shut. 
And if you look up, it'll bring us to our ceiling. We have plenty of light in here, all the puck lights and everything, but this system is actually the same one we did in our last van. It's pretty much a drop ceiling inspired kind of thing where there are panels, there's dual side laminated panels, quarter inch that fit into each other and everything kind of, like you start in the center and work your way out and that'll bring us to our curvature here. This is another piece of uh, like bendable plywood laminated on both sides. Just gives it a very clean, almost like archway look. And then all this too, if you just gotta give it a little pressure, you could get in there and do whatever work you had to do up top, as, but it's maintains its integrity throughout. Also on our finishes of coming from the top down, this is right above our slider right here. So we do have the bug screen and just finishing out this top area, which could always be a little bit tricky and getting to this corner, utilizing the bendable plywood, kind of an acoustic guitar feel right here that finishes out the whole area really nice. And then once we get that, the aforementioned uh, face frame over here, it will really shut everything out nicely. Okay, and speaking of finishes, we're very happy with how our slider as well as our rear do doors came together with these panels. So you close this up. This is the same kind of laminate that finish we have throughout the entire van, but this really just closes up this entire uh, slider really well. We have Arctic turn windows in here that give you a bug screen as well as a privacy shade, whatever you may need it. They also open up as an awning window. So you can really get, I mean, even if it's raining or anything like that, you can go ahead and get a really nice breeze in here. From there, it brings us to a kitchen. We have a split galley going on. These are white oak countertops that we uh, custom made inside our shop. You can go ahead and flip this leaflet up for extended counter space, as well as a workspace from the passenger seat. Um, in the actual kitchen itself, we have a dual burner induction cooktop, a four and a half cubic fridge from Novacool. Thing runs very well, stays nice and cold, as well as a convection oven and air fryer. If you wanna get into storage, there's a nice little kind of pantry. These are all adjustable as well, so you can go ahead and just kind of like set where everything is based on your needs. The, the, just the little accents as well, just to you know, ventilate the fridge as well as give it a good look. We finish these kind of grates with white oak. We have a little storage up top as well as a deep chested drawer on the bottom. We'll bring you to the other side of the kitchen where the sink's located. We have the grain match uh, sink cover right here. Could act as a cutting board as well as a good cover just for that extra space or keeping things on the inside. Uh, this is an undermounted sink on a wood countertop and I know carpenters out there are gonna say, why'd you do that? It's what the client wanted. We put a bunch of sealant on there as well as caulk. We did our best to keep it, all the integrity in there and she promised to take care of it. So I think it'll go well. Uh, from there, we get over to just our control boards. This is the controller for the heating system. Here's the electric dump for the gray water tank underneath, as well as a timer for the hot water heater. We have a four gallon hot water heater underneath. And the timer's there just because if you leave that thing running all day, it'll just totally drain your battery. So it's just kind of a good like, you know, redundancy for yourself. Getting down here is all our systems, as well as the water filtration that comes right at, this is a pretty, cool sink, the, hot, the filtered water's right there, so it keeps everything nice and clean and condensed. Clean and condensed well. We have our overhead storage. So this is the same deal, that hat, well this is three quarter. Uh, finished, pre-finished plywood on the inside and with a white oak veneer to match the countertops. Nice and clean and easy to wipe down on the inside. We did the little things here, like just the recessed magnets as well as a strut, so things have a very smooth look. They stay shut when you want them shut, they open when you want them open. Moving on to our backsplash. This was chosen by the client to fit the look of the entire van. On both sides, we're gonna have the 120 outlets, GFCI, as well as USB-C and USB-A kind of connections opens up to our storage here. This is a full pole, 15 inch uh, cab wide cabinet. Nice and deep one on the bottom. All the storage you may need. Uh, so now that you've cooked your food, you need a dining area to enjoy it. So we have a lagu mount table and bench seats right here. Just make for a very comfortable place to sit down. Um, we're actually right now getting the cushion uh, covers fabricated. So that'll be even more comfortable once we get those sorted. But this table moves very easily out of the way. And these bench sheets themselves actually open up to some of our systems. On the driver's side, you can open this for a little bit of storage if you need it. And once you pull this out, it opens up to our water systems and our plumbing. We have a 12 volt water pump and accumulator as well as a 35 gallon tank with a fill in the garage in the back, which you will see. And that's over on our driver's side. The passenger side 
to where things open up to the electric system. No storage here because this is the meat of our electrical system. That's the, the uh, 30 amp uh, solar charger, a Lynx distributor, as well as a servo. The servo, just so you can get your metrics on all your electrical systems, is right up over here. Going back into this, this will pull right off in that same mechanical fashion. And our client, we actually had this closed for a while, but the client actually took this run for a little shakedown run. And on her way, she's like, I really wish I had a little bit of extra storage underneath the bench seat because it's underutilized right there. So we knocked together some blocking for her. You can go have that storage, but if you ever need to access your battery system, we have 600 amp hours of lithium inside this rig. If you wanna go ahead and cover everything up. If you ever had to uh, access all the batteries and the rest of the electrical components, you could go through the, uh, the garage, would be the main way to get there. But it always is an option too, to go through the front of the van. So that closes up. And then if you ever need to access those batteries or anything else, we have a tambour door right here. It slides right up. Most of the time getting to the back, you'll be going in the back of the van, but it's always good to have that option. So this will be day to day, a nice twin size bed, but you do have the option to pull this out in the same system that we made last time to give you a little bit extra space. And we have a bit of bedding underneath here actually to make this twin a full size queen. So if you ever have anyone that you're uh, bringing on the road with you, everyone has a comfortable place to sleep. This closes too, and this rolls too. We fabricated this in our shop. This stays right off the countertop, nice and tight right there. So you always have the option to create a little bit more sleeping space. And that goes right over the lagoon mount table, as well as our bench seat. So it's not even that much of a process to really pull out. Going from the, there, you saw our overhead storage at the foot side, obviously, so you're not be banging your head on anything. You have another one of these Arctic turn windows, so you can get some more privacy or a breeze, as well as a skylight for a little bit of st stargazing. The same thing applies to these as the Arctic turn windows. Go in and get a bug screen or get your privacy. And you could open this at any time and access your roof or just get a little escape hatch. From there, you can see our rear here. We kind of stayed in the spirit of our um, curvature right here, more of like kind of an archway clean look going on, and then mounted this curtain rod in between so you'll be able to get that privacy on the back windows, especially with these nice finished panels. Over here, we just have a little night light. This is removable, so you always have a little extra bit of light as you're meandering around at night, and a fan to stay cool. The extension of this uh, upper cabinet here is this little shelf. I mean, it's pretty decorative. It's not a ton of storage up there, but it's a good place to place your phone or just a little, some decorations, anything you might like to do. And then we really try to maximize the space on the bed from left to right by bumping these out to re like really give you the nice comfortable sleep so you can go east to west without much trouble. And then up front, speaking of keeping cool at night, we also have our AC unit, runs on a remote as well, or you can just turn things on and off manually. This thing works wonders, nomadic cooling does a great job. You stay very comfortable in here. So now let me show you around back. We'll check out the garage as well as this AC up on top of the roof. All right, so let's go back and check out our garage area. We have your standard ladder just getting up and down. Things open up. You get a really good look at these panels here. We're very happy with how this finish came out throughout these rear doors. And another thing is that this client is traveling with two small dogs. So it was very important that Inky and Blinky did not fall down the side of the bed at night. So this shelf really keeps things, I mean, it's great for a water bottle or your phone while you're sleeping, but it's also great to avoid losing your dogs in the garage. So that looks really nice. Here's your water fill to complete that one. We have a light here as well, if you want a little bit of extra light in your garage. That opens up to, so our water fill opens up to our water system that houses that 35 gallon water tank, as well as an easy, um, compressor valve for winterizing. There's your sink as well as your shore power control. We have a hose back here, so you can always clean things off. Moving over to the passenger side in the same spirit that I showed you inside, water on the driver, electrical on the left. We'll bring you to our AC-DC distribution panel. Make sure everything is working in there, as well as the rest of our batteries. I said, there's your 600 amps of lithium, very well protected and also shows your 3000 watt inverter charger from Victron right there. We went mostly Victron units. Shout out Chris Hanrahan at Tectris who does great work. 
Uh, this is our GFCI outlet, as well as a moonshade awning. Like I said, at your camp spot, you get nice and comfortable, and your suction cups, you get to hear him those to the outside of your van. Uh, last time I did my build, I got a lot of flack from the experienced campers, including yourself, Patrick, for having the shore power on the inside of the van, which I did not make that same mistake again. Right here on the outside, you don't have to run anything through a window. That's the classic way to do it. The water fill is still on the inside. I'll probably get flack for that, but at least we have the shore power on the outside. Uh, if you want to go and check out the top of our van here. So from here, you get a really good view on the skylight. Like I said, this client was looking for a roof deck and I was saying, like, oh, we're kind of tight with space up here, but it really is nice to have this perch, a place where you can clean your solar panel as well as get a good view of anywhere that you might be. So our 400 watt solar panel, the pneumatic cooling AC unit, our exhaust fan, and that is about it. Uh, thanks for coming to check everything out, Patrick. It was a lot of fun on this build and looking forward to doing a few more. So thanks for checking it out. Matt, always a pleasure to have you on the channel. I loved your first build, but this one is spectacular as well. I like some of the improvements that you made and I love the overall appearance. I'll make sure I put links in the description so our viewers can follow along on your next build. This is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. We'll see you soon.